This video is sponsored by Skillshare. In this day and age, we have a computer in our pocket that is powerful enough to scan papers, film like 1080p videos, uh, scan documents, did I say that? Make amazing audio recordings, and yet we are still working with and holding on to so much paper. I mean, th thank you USPCS, but today we're gonna talk about the paper clutter in your life and how you're going to crush it. Before we get started and talking about today's video, it is sponsored by Skillshare. Thank you so much for Skillshare for being an awesome sponsor for the channel. We will talk a little bit about Skillshare later, but let's talk about admonishing paper clutter from your life. I know the prospect of dealing with paper clutter can be really intimidating and seem impossible because there is just so many papers and stuff floating around. You've got it like, coming in your house unsolicited. That is the, the thing that makes me the most mad is that paper is coming into your house unsolicited and you don't know what to do with it. So I'm gonna give you some tips and strategies on working on paper clutter and filing, and I hope that you'll be able to take some good tips away and get your paper clutter under control. So let's get started. If you're feeling intimidated by the idea of getting your paper clutter under control, we will do the same thing that I do when I get overwhelmed is that I break things down into little like manageable, simpler things so that I, I feel that I can tackle it. And from what I can understand and from what I have seen in most people's houses, there are four kinds of paper clutter that people are usually struggle with struggling with in their house. And they are things you need to respond to or deal with. These are bills, invitations, permission slips, things that need to be signed, um, those kinds of things that need some kind of action from you, but you haven't done it yet. There are things you need to throw away or shred, things you don't care about, magazines you've already read, newspapers that you've already read, junk mail, things that are coming in. You don't really need to deal with them, but you just need to either deal with them by shredding them or throwing them in the recycling. Then there are things you need to file. This may be temporary filing or it may be permanent filing. Temporary filing is things like tax returns and things you don't need to keep for the rest of your life. But for a while, you know, the whole thing with tax returns as they say about seven years, again, always check with your attorney. Do, do not, you know, take my advice. I am not a tax attorney. So please always check with your tax attorney. And there are things you need to file permanently, like certificates, um, either birth or death certificate, certificates, licenses, things like that, that you will, if you have to stand in the line to get it again, you need to file that permanently. And the fourth kind of filing that not a lot of people talk about is sentimental papers. These are things like your kids' art, uh, that they may be made at school, sentimental papers, old diaries, love letters, things that you um, want to hold on to, but they don't really serve you unless you look at them. Um, and you don't, you don't really, you know, they're kind of in between, kind of, you don't want to put them in a file, but you don't want to like, you know, it's, it's a weird space. So there are a couple things missing from this list that I think that you should just get rid of all together. Those things are instruction manuals and takeout menus from restaurants in most restaurants, in most areas of the US at least, is what I can speak for, those things are online. If they are not, then you do what you need to do, and keep it and call them. But in, the, in, in most cases, you can probably find the, the, ad the address, the menu and the phone number online. So um, do your search before you throw your menu away. But for most, for most restaurants, they, they have put their stuff online by now. Not the case for all of them, but just saying in general. And instruction manuals, the same thing. You could probably find the PDF of the instruction manual online. There's really no reason in 2021 to keep instruction manuals um, unless it's a super obscure product and they haven't put their instruction manual online and somehow you don't know how to use it. Um, but in most cases, it can be just chucked. So in essence, we've got three kinds of filing and one kind of outlier. We've got three things that need to be filed or dealt with and then like the sentimental papers that you neither eat that you either need to decide to file, which I don't recommend, or display or cherish, which I do recommend. We'll go back to that. But the first thing I want to say is that this is there a little bit of tough love, tough organizer love right now. Just get ready for it. There is no good way to organize the mail if you do not plan to open the mail. And I know. 
I get asked all the time, how do you organize the mail? How do you organize the mail? The only good way to organize the mail is to open it on a regular basis. Coming from me, a former procrastinator and one who did not open the mail, I can attest that this is true. I have been to several people's houses where there have been boxes and bags of unopened mail and inside these envelopes, I have found checks. I have found death certificates. I have found passports. I have found old expired uh, coupons and gift certificates. I have found bills that were now the fees for the late fees are like exponentially increased. I have found old parking tickets for, you know, not paid for a long time. I have found all kinds of stuff that was just time sensitive. So if the only way really to organize the mail is to open it when it comes into your house. I mean, just think about it. We're getting all this unsolicited clutter. It's really hard. So just deal with it when it comes in the house. If you are getting too much mail, if you feel like you're getting too many pieces of paper, there is a do not mail list you can sign up for. I will link it down below. Um, you can call companies and ask them to stop mailing you. <laughs> I have done that before with Capital One who was stalking me for a long time. I was like, what's in your wallet? I was like, it's paper. That's what's in my wallet because <laughs> you keep sending me paper. But, um, and you can ask for your, uh, phone company, your cable company, et cetera, et cetera, to bill you electronically so that you can reduce the number of papers coming into your home. You do what you gotta do, um, but that'll, it, you really can cut it off at the start by doing some of those things, but you really do have to open the mail. I'm so sorry. There's no, I, there's no good mail filing system that I have to recommend. It just doesn't work in my experience. Just, just do it, just do it. Get a, get a nice letter opener, you know? Get, get one that's like a sword. You can have a lot of fun, make it interesting, but just just don't, just open it. Because after you open the mail, then it, it then it, it it transforms like like a Pokemon, and it get, it gets into it gets into one of those filing areas. It either needs to be permanently filed, dealt with, or shredded. So after you open the mail, then you can deal with it. So again, after you open the mail, it either it either becomes permanent filing active filing, shredding or tossing, or it becomes something you want to cherish. Now I wanna emphasize the word cherish because I believe in the power of language. Um, I don't like to refer to the junk drawer as the junk drawer because I don't want junk in my house. I refer to it as the utility drawer. It makes it sound useful. Everything in that should be useful, something that is useful for you and belongs in your home, unlike junk. So. With sentimental items or things that you feel like you wanna save, but you don't know what to do with them, you want to cherish them. Now, in my experience, I find the best way to do this, deal with um, sort of sentimental papers that you don't really wanna put in a file is to make an active journal where you can paste the picture or the card or something like that inside a journal. And what I do is I write a little memory next to it, how I felt, what I was doing. And it's nice to like open it and look back on it. It's not inside a box where I have to like rifle through. Um, and it's not in a file where I probably will never see it again. Um, if it's a child's drawings, those are really nice to have on display. I love to um, work with parents and children on making a museum in their house or an art exhibit because a lot of children have really wonderful pieces of art that they want to display for a while but i like to have my parents explain to their children that it's like a museum where they have some paintings for a while and they take them down and they put new ones up so you can even like make it a fun thing where it's only a limited time exhibit you can have like you know there's this piece of art and you can give it awards you can make it a really fun thing um, but just know that some of that stuff is going to be rotating and you can let your kids decide at the end of the day whether or not they want to hold on to their their art also more organizer tough love i just want to let you know that your kids do not need all of their homework papers and tests from their entire childhoods in a file box i have never met an adult child who was happy that their parents saved these things um, I, I never met anyone who had actually saved these things from their childhood. It's more parents saving these things, thinking that the kids might need it. I'm gonna tell you right now, most of the people I've met don't need it, 
don't have it. Even the stuff I was, I was saving my own like papers from, from college and from grad school. And eventually I just was like, I don't, I'm, I don't, I'm never going to read these again. And I just got them, chucked them out of my life and I haven't missed them since. I'm living my life for the, for the now. And I, I enjoyed all the, those experiences in my life, but I didn't need to, to archive every little thing that I did in school. So I'm going to tell you right now, your kids don't want that unless they explicitly tell you and you're better off just letting it become a paper bag or um, some recyclable wrapping paper in its, its other life. Another thing you might consider while deciding what to do with sentimental papers is, is this item important enough to save in a place in my home when I am going to be acquiring more of these papers for the rest of my life. Now that is something that most people don't think about is that there's, they're going to be getting these, these things in, in their lives unsolicited for the rest of their life. So just consider if it's special enough to earn a place in your home and in your sort of emotional space. Um, if, it's gonna, if you're gonna be receiving the, a lot of these things for the rest of your life, of your life and, and I'm talking mostly about greeting cards, <laughs> you'll be receiving mostly probably a lot of greeting cards for the rest of your life. So if you save a few, that's really awesome, but um, just have perspective that you'll be getting a lot more, hopefully. A permanent file can be anything that is as small as a little document box or as large as a big filing cabinet. I've seen those big, tall filing cabinets or the big, long ones. Um, if you need to save a bunch of papers, um, you can grab some really cute filing uh, cabinets from Container Store or whatever. Poppin makes really cute ones too. But permanent filing is something to be done very, very mindfully. Um, and it's things that are, again, really easy, I'm sorry, really difficult to replace if you happen to misplace them or if they get destroyed. So if you have to stand in the government line or go through a lot of hoops to get a copy of this item, you want to permanently file that. Things that are saved for business or for tax purposes or medical bills, those things you have to refer directly to whoever it's gonna be relevant to, your insurance company, your attorney, um, make sure that you check with them before you go and save everything. You may find out that you don't need to save every paid medical bill, every, um, I don't know, paid car insurance statement. You may need, you may be able to either save digital copies of these. Some, some companies and organizations are very happy to keep digital copies, or you may find out that you don't need it all together. So before you go and uh, decide to keep everything, check with whoever it's relevant to, see if you really need to keep it. Um, and if, you know, you may be able to free up a bunch of space in your filing cabinet. My personal filing is pretty small. Um, I don't have a whole lot of papers there and one so once a year I go through and I do a big shredding party. <laughs> now, speaking of shredders, a shredder is a very, very important investment in your paper clutter journey. I d definitely think, I mean, 100%, that's the first thing you should have is have a shredder and have it readily available and have it be a good shredder that works. Don't cheap out on this because uh, you don't want to have your shredder all of a sudden just crap out in the middle of your shredding job. It's going to be really upsetting. You're going to be mad, cursing, it's bad. So either like pay a little extra money or like make sure you look at the reviews first, make sure it's a quality shredder and make it somewhere accessible where you can just like grab whatever you need to shred and shred it. Things you need to shred are things with your personal identifying information, your name, your address, your phone number, your email address, anything that they, your social security number. I don't, I don't think I need to say that, but anything that is personally identifying, you need to shred. You don't need to shred the entire document if this information is not contained within the entire document. So sometimes if I get a magazine that was sent to my house, I'll just tear off the little piece that has my name and address on it, put that in the shredder and put the rest in the recycling. So save yourself a little bit of hassle. Your shredder will be very happy you did that as well. So shredder in there. For items that are active files, you can use a like a desktop file where you can just drop things in, or you can use the good old inbox outbox system. That's really, I think that's really handy because it's rather shallow, only a few inches, and you, it prevents you from filling that 
uh, inbox up to where you can actually manage the pile. Make sure you do actually set a date with yourself to go through the pile. I advise at least well, once a week at the very least um, to just go through and deal with all the stuff there, either shred, permanently file, whatever you need to do. Um, so that way you're not gonna like let the pile get up really high. Cause that's where people run into trouble is they let that stuff pile up and then it gets so large that they get intimidated by looking at it and you're like, I'm not going through that pile. Don't let it get there. Start with a little pile, keep it small, keep it small, keep on top of it. And lastly, my favorite thing to do to solve the clutter issue is to digitize as many documents as I can. I have a number of favorite digitizing apps or scanning apps. I will put them on the screen. These are really awesome. And I think that they are so good at what they do and it's super easy. I'm actually gonna, I'm working on a project right now where I'm digitizing a bunch of my, a bunch of my sheet music that I just, I don't wanna have the sheet music around anymore, but I'll have it in the cloud and it'll be wonderful. So if you've got an iPhone in your pocket, you've got an Android phone, you can easily do this. You don't even need the scanning machines anymore. Oh, yay. Um, and you can store it somewhere in a cloud where it's nice and secure. Um, if you are really wanna keep physical copies of things and you're afraid, like what if something happens to this, you can always buy a fireproof document box for the really, really important documents so that if anything happens, you know they'll be safe. So along with crushing your paper clutter in 2021, you can actually learn more things and learn new skills. And that's where our sponsor Skillshare comes in. Skillshare is an online learning community where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people on topics including entrepreneurship, cooking, interior design, photography, and a whole lot more. Skillshare offers classes designed for real life so you can move your creative journey forward without putting your life on hold. Some classes are really short, like 10 or 12 minutes, so that you can brush up on some rusty skills like this knife skills class from Plated. I consider my knife skills to be okay, but I was happy to find the short class to tweak a couple of things I was doing wrong to really up my dicing, mincing, and julienne game. My favorite thing about the class is the student project section where you can see how others did from what they learned in the class, which will inspire you a whole lot more. Skillshare is also really affordable, especially compared to pricey in-person classes and workshops. An annual subscription is less than 10 bucks a month. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. So thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. I hope you learned something today and I hope you're gonna go crush that paper clutter. I know you can do it, you can do it. Just open your mail. That's all I'm asking you to do is just open the mail. All right guys, hope you're having a good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. And I'll see you in the next one. Open the mail, okay, bye. Here he is. I know everyone has to ask me about him. Here he is. He's dirty. <laughs> he played outside today and he was so, oh, look at your dirty feet. He was so happy and uh, he just, he's just, he's having the best time. Quarantine is the best for him, right? Oh, you want to go to sleep though? Okay, <laughs> I'll let him sleep. All right, say bye.